everyone, it's Hermione and back to school season is in full swing so I have some more back to school DIYs for you guys. I'm going to show you guys a few things that hopefully you can use for back to school or in your office or going to university. Pretty much anyone can make and use these DIYs, not just if you're in school. So as always don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already and definitely check out my social media, I will leave that in the description bar. And with all of that, let's get into the video. The first thing I'm going to show you guys how to make is this pencil case and you won't believe it but this is actually made from a cardboard cereal box. But don't let that fool you because it is very sturdy and it will hold a lot of school supplies. So start by taking your cardboard box and then you're going to measure how tall you want the case to be. This is up to you, mine was three and a half inches. Draw that line across the front and sides of the box and then for the back you're going to want to extend it. So measure the sides of the box, add this number onto the height of the box and then add an extra bit for the flap. Then you're going to want to cut that out and what you're going to have is a box that looks like this. It's going to be much longer in the back so that you can bend it over the top. Pull apart the sides of your box and then lay it flat. We're now going to create the top where the flap comes over so draw a line across the box and then that width of the side of the box as we talked about earlier. Fold these over and score them so that they create the lid of the box. I gave mine a coat of paint. This is optional but it does stop the packaging showing through your fabric and your paper. So I laid it on the fabric and then I'm just cutting up the seams of the box to make it easier to fold. I'm taking a glue gun to go around the edges and then folding these edges over to make sure they're firmly in place. Do this around the whole entirety of the box until you have the front of the box covered. Then take some scrapbook paper in your choice or more fabric if you would like. Cut it to size like I've done here and then just glue it on with some hot glue. This will create the inside pattern of your box. When that is finished you're going to want to fold over all of the moving parts again so that you can go ahead and glue your box together. I'm using hot glue for this again because I feel like it really works well for mixed medias such as fabric and paper together. To finish I'm using velcro to close the box so I stuck the two pieces of velcro together and I'm just sticking them to the box like so to make sure they're in the right position and this is the final product. I'm really pleased with how this came out and it's actually surprisingly resilient and very tough because of the extra fabric and paper. Next I'm going to show you guys how I made this chalkboard anchor. I've never seen a chalkboard anchor before so I thought I would try something a little bit different. So I'm taking some vinyl chalkboard paper from Versa Chalk and I'm just drawing my design on the back and placing it onto this chipboard anchor. The chipboard is from Hobby Lobby. I love this vinyl paper because it's so fun and you can use it on a variety of different chalkboard projects and you can create uh, so many different things with it because it's so versatile. I decided to paint it blue on the sides but I didn't like it so what I'm doing is going in with a sharpie pen and going around the edges. This also hides any mistakes you might have made. Then I'm having fun at decorating the chalkboard in multiple different ways. This is so much fun. I'm using the Versa Chalk chalk pens. These come in a range of thicknesses. They've got the thin ones, the thick ones, and I've got the neon ones, which I think is so cool, but I'm using plain old white. This is what came with the vinyl paper itself. And then I had a little bit of fun making this henna design, which maybe doesn't go with the nautical theme, but I thought it was so cute. So if you guys try this, have fun and let your imagination run wild. Next I'm making a desk organizer. You can prop this up on your desk or put it on your wall and this will help you keep everything that you need to remember in one place, whether it's dates on a calendar or notes. So I'm taking some contact paper drawer liner from Target and I'm covering this canvas board with the contact paper. I'm laying it flat on the table and placing the canvas on it upside down. I found this was the easiest way because contact paper is quite tricky to work with. And then I went ahead and flattened that out making sure there were no air bubbles. So then I'm going ahead and making the note board of the dry erase one. So I'm using some scrapbook paper and tracing the glass of a photo frame that I got from the dollar store. And then I'm going ahead and cutting this out. I'm doing one as a note board that's dry erase and one that's a calendar. So I printed this off on the computer. I just really whipped it up on Microsoft Word and printed it out really quickly. And I'm putting them in these frames that I got from the dollar store. I emptied them and painted them pink because you know, I love pink. These frames were really difficult to work with so what I did was I hot glue gunned 
three sides leaving the top open that way I could pull out the scrapbook paper or the calendar every time I wanted to change it as you can see here these are the three sides and I left the top open to make this super functional I hot glue gun some post-it notes to the bottom of the organizer just so they're there when you're at your desk you can take them and use them and I also created a little space on top to pin any reminders or photos that you wanted to pin and finally, here is a really quick and easy way to DIY some of your notebooks and make them look a little bit more exciting. I'm taking scrapbook paper and a composition book from Target and on the back of the scrapbook paper I'm drawing geometric shapes that I'm then cutting out. I used a printed one and a plain one to mix it up a little and then I'm gluing these on with Mod Podge. And don't worry if you don't want to buy a big old book of scrapbook paper, you can use a paint pen like so or a regular sharpie and draw fun patterns on plain paper like I'm doing here. And this is a really fun way to make your own designs on your notebook. I'm just doing really abstract blobs and then some wobbly-ish kind of lines on this one too. And this is the finished result and you can let your imagination run wild and use whatever kind of print or patterns to make this geometric style notebook. So that is everything I have to show you guys in this video. Let me know if you're going to try and make any of these things in the comments down below. Once again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!